presents Jack Carson and Rod O'Connor. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with the Family Theater, presents Horse Sense, starring Jack Carson. And now, here is your host, Rod O'Connor. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Horse Sense, starring Jack Carson as Homer. You probably heard the saying that anything can happen in Hollywood. Well, now, that's just nonsense. Hollywood is a very normal place, and except for a minority of people like my partner Rodney O'Mara, the entertainment business here attracts very few screwballs, creeps, or featherheads. To get ahead in movies, radio, or TV, you've got to have talent, industry, and a level head. So that saying about anything can happen in Hollywood simply doesn't apply, except to my partner, Rodney O'Mara. How did everything go at the conference? Badly, very badly. Homer, we've been victimized. Rodney, you said it. Well, what happened? Didn't the sponsor renew the series? Worse than that. Far worse. He did renew it. Well, then I don't understand. What Mr. O'Mara is trying to say is that the sponsor renewed it, but we no longer own it. Oh, boy. When I think of the ingratitude, I picked that kid up out of the gutter, the gutter. How can you not own it? Because somebody else owns it. Thanks to a young man, I will shortly run over with a truck. Take it down. Take it easy, Rodney. I had a dream last night about a black cat. Now, there was the warning. Look, I know I'm just a hired hand around here. In brief, Rosie, we've been double-crossed by no less a pillar of Western justice than Frisco Frank himself. Houlihan? Mm. The star of the show, he calls himself. To my face, he said it. We should have tied him up to a longer contract. Yeah, we should have tied him up to a palm tree by the neck. And now it comes to you. When I think of what I've done for that boy. A nice Irish kid, I said. He's got eyes like my old Irish mother. Could I be permitted a few details? Yeah, yeah. We get to the meeting, and Frisco Frank was already there with the sponsor. And lawyers. I never saw so many lawyers except in general sessions. The crux of the situation is that Frisco will not renew his contract with us for any price. He wants 25% of the show. Is he kidding? Nobody even giggled. This brings the sponsor into the act who says that he can't have a messy situation like this on his hands. He likes a show where everyone is happy, especially the star. And here sits Frisco Frank with tears in his eyes. So he makes us an offer for the package. You mean he bought you out? It's that or he won't renew the series. Seventy-five grand. Seventy-three of which we already owe the banks. We had to sell. Frisco Frank rides again. Mm Mm-hmm, but not in this pasture. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I got it all figured out. Tonight, I'm going to stop by Frisco Frank's apartment. When he opens the door, I'll be smiling. Gently, like this. He won't suspect I got a gun under my coat. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you miss, we'll all go to jail. Hey, that's an angle. Let's do a prison series. It's a modern prison. See, very progressive, no chains. Now, we'll get someone like Ronald Coleman to play the warden, only cheaper. Sort of an unknown Ronald Coleman? Yeah. I wish I'd thought of that. And this time, we're going to keep him unknown... Now, what's the matter? Don't you like prison stories? I like Frisco Frank better. Listen, Rodney, we got to get cooking. The way you live, that, that two grand won't last us a month. I'll cut down. I'll tell you what, I'll take a room at the Y. Say, how about a quiz show? Thanks, I just had one. No, wait a minute, that's great. <laughs> With the biggest jackpot ever offered. $50,000 every week, we'll call it, uh, mm, hey, something like, uh, where's the money? Mm-hmm. And by the time they guess, you'll be on your way to Mexico with it. Homer, is that friendly? Well, why don't we start with a big name and build a series around him? Like whom? Well, what we need is somebody with a little name and a brain to match, huh? Like Frisco Frank? Mm, Frank had one button too many. He knew how to use the phone to call a lawyer. Oh, we want somebody who can't even communicate with other human beings. We'll sign them up for 20 years. At a dollar an hour. And they're nothing but grateful. Wonderful. And just who did you have in mind? Yeah, well, that's, that's the problem. Yeah, offhand nobody. I've got it. How about a show built around a baby? Just a, a little baby. Hey, great, an orphan. No, 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 no. No, I mean no, a real no, orphan. No, no. Who hasn't any folks, so there's no one come around to fight about a salary, No, huh? it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work. You'd get the health department after you. No, we keep him clean. Rodney, it's against the law. It's illegal. We could adopt him, body and soul. They couldn't lay a hand on us. Well, you forget it. What can a baby do anyhow? 
coo and cry? You call that entertainment? Hey, I got it. South America, right out of the jungle. What out of the jungle? A wild Indian, full grown. We'll call him Jungle Boy. Rodney, I, I, I think we need some lunch. Seven feet tall, have shoulders like the Taft building. How would you get him here? Air Express in a crate. Boy, it's an inspiration. Mr. O'Mara, I don't think the immigration people would let you hey, wait, 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 I'm getting it. What? Get, when you said the crate and the jungle? You like it? Yeah, a, an animal. That's what we're looking for. Homer. An animal star like uh, Lassie or Rin Tin Tin. Hey, you got it, Homer. You got our it. animal, our very own. No managers, no agents. But not a dog. No, no. Something, something bigger, faster. A horse. Yeah, a horse. Yeah, a horse. A great, a horse, big, powerful tremendous, horse. Tremendous, tremendous. With big fiery heels like Pegasus. Like who? Yeah, that's Greek. A Greek horse? Yeah, no, no, no. That's uh, from mythology. Is that near Athens? Good look, it's a book. Well, he was an American horse. It's give it a name like uh, Thunderfoot. Homer, you got it, you got it, Homer. I think Thunderfoot's been used. All right, all right, Lightning Foot. It's not. The name can come later. But look at that scope. He gets the message through, stamps out fires, warns the settlers, and no agents. Homer, it's just marvelous. It's great, partner. It's simply great. All right, come on. We'll get a bite to eat on the way. You know what? The way to where? Santa Anita, of course. Rodney, this is no day for the track. We got a work to do on that, that Thunderfoot series. That's just what I had in mind. You what? Where's a better place to start casting for a central character? Huh? I suppose you could say that all our troubles began that afternoon when we drove out to the track. I, I didn't believe for a minute that Rodney wanted to do anything but watch a few races and get rid of his shirt. So when we separated at the clubhouse, I went immediately to the grill and ordered the senior ham and cheese sandwich because on an empty stomach, the walk back from Pasadena to Hollywood is a man killer. And about 20 minutes later, as I'm polishing off the last of the slaw, Rodney dashes up to my table with a wild light in his eye. Homer, Homer, I got him, I got him! The winner of the fourth race, don't tell me. No, no, the star of our series, Thunderhoof. Yeah, lightning foot. What do you mean you got him? He's ours, $400. They just signed the papers. He, you what? I bought him. Oh, what a horse. Rodney, have you snapped your cap? Well, he's a little lame. That's how I got him so cheap. 400 bucks for a burnout nag with only three legs? This is a bargain. You don't know what we got. I know what I got. A partner with scrambled brains. This horse can think. Well, that puts him one up on you. Oh, I'm serious, Homer. You say something, this nag gets a message. You think I'd shell out 400 clans for a horse that's nothing but a horse? Now, look, partner. Hmm? I'm going to call a cab, and I want you to promise to wait right here. Well, you think I'm sunstruck or something, No, no, huh? no, no, no strong arm stuff, I promise. No guys in white coats. Okay, wise guy, I'm going to show you. I believe you, kid. Talking horses are a dime a dozen. I never said he could talk. Now, don't smoosh me around. Oh, excuse me. All I said is that he can think. A talking horse. What do you take me for? Not as much as the last guy you ran into. Huh? He took you for 400 bucks. I followed Rodney out of the clubhouse and passed the paddock toward the stables because since one partner can bind another to a deal, like it or not, I own 50% of a horse. And to be honest, it wasn't such a bad-looking plug after all. A six-year-old I used to race under the name of Stopgap. But even for a racehorse, it looked a little thin and there was something wrong with its right hind leg. Well, isn't he a beauty? Heavenly. Ah, oh, come on, admit it, you sorry head. He's a fine-looking animal. He'd look a lot finer on all fours. Oh, that'll clear up. He just overstrained his flintlock. Fatlock. All right, his ankle. How you doing, Thundercloud? Will you quit changing his name? You'll have him crazy. Hey, look, look! He nodded his head. Oh, he did not. To say he's doing fine, now what I tell you? He lowered his head. He thought you were going to feed him something. I'm telling you, this horse can think. I was out here asking him questions. Did you ask him what's wrong with his foot? Of course not. He's no vet. Are oh, you, baby? You're no vet. Rodney. Hey, look. Look, he's shaking his head. No. He's no vet. He's shaking off flies. Go on. Yeah, ho horses do that with their manes all the time. He ain't got no mane. Yeah, well, it's an instinctive gesture. They, they do it anyhow. You mean that a horse that can think would waste time trying to shake off flies with a mane he ain't got? Well, he doesn't know he hasn't got it. Oh, now that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. Twenty bucks says he knows he ain't got a mane. Now put up or shut up. Rodney, you're going to pieces. Twenty bucks? Go ahead, ask him yourself. I won't say a word. I'm not talking any horse. You're afraid I'm right. Don't be crazy. Well, then I'll ask him. Hey, baby, 
You know you ain't got a man, don't you? Eh? See? <laughs> What'd I tell you? He shook his head no. Well, of course. How could a dumb animal be expected to ask? <laughs> What am I saying? They probably cut it off while he was sleeping. No, no, no. It's flies again. Just flies. He didn't shake his head no. You don't even believe your own it's, eyes. It's only a horse. You're not going to do this to me, Rodney. How much proof do you want? Well, I'm not having any thinking horses or black cats or broken mirrors. Uh, Homer, will you please none... take it easy? He's going to be the star of our series. Ain't you, baby. Will you stop talking to him? As soon as your padlock heals up... Fetlock! Homer, look! He's looking down at his hind foot. That's just because it hurts him. He's trying to put his weight on it. Yeah, now I'm getting out of here. He's the smartest horse in the world. Oh, we're in, kid. We're home. We're going to make a million. Well, I must admit to Rodney's credit that we did do pretty good for a while. And in one way, Samson turned out to be quite a horse. You see, Rodney insisted we call him Samson because he said his mane must have been cut off while he slept. Otherwise, such a smart horse would have known about it. <laughs> so it was Samson the Marble Horse, and by the end of the first 13 weeks, our series was among the top 10 TV shows. One thing had me bothered, though. Rodney never gave up believing that Samson could really think. But I, I didn't know how serious it was until one night about 8 o'clock when Rosie and I were just leaving the studio. My car was parked over near the sound stage next to Samson's private stall. And as we started past it, Rosie noticed there was a light inside. You suppose there's someone in there? Hmm. Who would it be at this hour? Maybe Samson turned on the light himself to read oh, variety. Oh, don't you start. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come on, we'll turn it out. He won't be able to sleep. Homer, wait a minute. Huh? Well, look, there's someone in Samson's stall, sitting on a stool in front of him. Well, how do It's Mr. O'Meara. Rodney? Uh, he seems to be talking to the horse. Yeah. Well, come on. Let's get up a little closer. Mr. Samson, I got something else to tell you. That's something I'm very ashamed of, especially in view of how much success you brought to me and Homer. You listening, Samson? I fall the... Well, it's sort of... I, I feel that you've been taken advantage of, Samson, and I'm as much to blame as anybody. I mean, well, here you are to star of the show, and me and Homer raking in all the money. Now, to me, that doesn't seem fair. D does it seem fair to you, Samson? What's that clown talking about? Wait a minute. The horse double-crossed him. He nodded. Oh, That's very gracious of you, Samson, but it doesn't fool me for a minute. You know, being the smartest horse that you are, that Homer and I are simply exploiting you, but uh, you're too much of a gentleman to come right out and say so. I think Mr. O'Mara's been working too hard. His brain snapped. Switch up to turn out the light. Get back, Miss Shadow, sir. All right, sleep tight now. You got a big day tomorrow. Here he comes. And don't worry, old pal. I'll make it right for you. Well, I didn't get a wink of sleep that night, or as far as that goes, any night for the rest of the week. My partner, Rodney O'Meara, is a wild man. There's never any telling what he's going to do. One day, he's having private conversations with the horse. And maybe the next thing you know, he'll be sleeping in a stall and living on oats and water. So something had to be done. I didn't want to embarrass him by letting on that Rosie and I had heard him talking to Samson, but during the next few days, he kept getting more and more stubborn and dictatorial, and until finally, I, I couldn't keep shut any longer. Didn't you ever learn to knock before you come in an office? Look, I knocked three times. You're sitting in there unconscious or something? I'm thinking. Leave me alone. I'll leave you strictly alone as soon as you tell me what's the story on this script. What script? This, this 1,000 bucks it costs us. And now Rosie says we're not going to use it. Yeah. Uh, I don't like it. Well, you liked it when you read the outline. I know, I know. You even tossed in a few ideas. I know. And the writer followed the outline completely, so what's the matter with the script? Okay, okay, so I changed my mind. Well, you haven't changed my mind, partner. And I've got a little something to say about these things. Listen, Homer, if it's a thousand bucks you're worried about... That's part of it. Okay, take it out of my But mainly, share. I like the script, and I think we ought to use it. Homer, believe me, it isn't right. You're crazy. It's a solid story. It moves right along. I... I mean, it isn't right for Samson. Yeah, but I... For the horse? You do not have to use that tone. How can it not be right for the horse? He just has to run up and down a couple of hills. Well, that's what I mean. He... It's trite. It's the same thing he's been doing for the last three shows. Rodney, it's all he can do. 
He's just a horse. Will you stop talking about him like that? Like what? Has it ever occurred to you where we'd be if it wasn't for Samson? Has it ever occurred to you where Samson would be if it weren't for us? The glue factory. Homer, I don't have to listen to this. You asked me you're going a little loco on the subject of the Samson. He's got a lot more brains than you have. So, so that's it. His brains again, huh? Yeah. And if you must know, the reason this script is out is because Samson doesn't like it. Wait a minute. Samson doesn't like it? I read it to him last night to get his reaction, and it was negative. Distinctly negative. You mean he shook off some flies while you were reading it to him? I mean he shook his head, and as far as I'm concerned, that kills it. All right, since you brought it up, and you don't seem to be ashamed of consulting horses on matters of high policy... I consider Samson much more than a horse. Don't I know it? So what did you mean by that conversation we were having with him last Monday night over in his stall? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play dumb with me. When you're steaming him up about being exploited and all, all that... Oh, you were spying! Who would spy on a horse? We thought someone had left his light on by mistake. Who's we? Me and Rosie. She's fired! She's hired! What is it you're cooking up for Samson? None of your business. You were talking very silly. Oh, yeah, but I wasn't talking to you, so it's none of your business. And if you don't like the way I'm handling this operation, you just say so, and I'm going to buy you out. Buy me out of this gold mine? <laughs> don't be hilarious. All right, then. But I'm looking out for Samson's interest, because what's good for him is good for the business. So you keep out of our way. <laughs> Well, for the next week, I don't even come around the office. I never felt so low in my life, plus which I was worried that Rodney was going to do something stupid and maybe send us all to the poorhouse. Because when a hard-hearted buck chaser like him suddenly goes soft on a dog or a horse or in the head, look out, you'll get somebody killed. But the more I worried, the, the less I could think. And then, just when I began to wonder if maybe I was making a big thing out of nothing at all, I got a hurried phone call from Rosie to come right down to the studio. What kept you? What kept you? Look, it's only been 10 minutes since you phoned. It's too late. What are you talking about? Mr. O'Mara just left here with the lawyers. The contract's already been witnessed. What contract? With Samson the Marvel Horse for 10000 a week. 10000 what a week? Dollars. That's his new salary. You're crazy. We don't have to pay him any salary. We own him. 10000 a week for the next 10 years, whether he works or not. Rodney did this? To build a ranch out in the valley so Samson will have some place to go when he retires. Ah, I'm beginning to get it. Who signed on behalf of Samson to collect the 10000 Well, Mr. O'Mara... But... Ah, you bet he did the dirty double-crosser. Signing a contract with himself. But he's already arranged for the place to be built and everything. All right, all right, all right, all right. If he wants to play like that... Well, Homer, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking no horse is going to be used to do me out of that kind of dough. But listen, Mr. O'Mara, seriously, he had tears in his eyes. Sure he did. It's not every day you knife a partner. Homer. All right, all right. Get me the phone number of that guy that we bought Samson from. He lives out somewhere near Northridge. Look, there's no way you can break the contract when one partner signs it. I know about partnerships, Rosie, but it works both ways. There's one little thing that Rodney forgot. What? You got the number? Yes, here it is. Okay, now get a bill of sale form out of the legal file. A bill of sale form. That's right. We're going to get rid of this nag once and for all. Hello, operator? I want to make a toll call. Well, it was almost midnight by the time Mr. Hackleberry drove his truck in from Northridge. I explained only a little of it over the phone to him, but he seemed very much interested in the 1000 bucks. And as far as he was concerned, a horse was just a horse. The one I was having trouble with was Rosie. It's, it's not as awful as losing 10,000 bucks a week. Uh, here, Mr. Hackleberry, uh, sign here. Uh, just let me see if I have this straight, sir. Oh, by all means. I buy back stop gap from you. His name's uh, Samson now. Oh, very well, Samson. That's right. In consideration of which I pay you $1. Well, that, that makes it legal, just like it says in the contract. You see, I'm a partner. You tell him, Rosie. He's a partner. Oh, very well. <laughs> And then, in further consideration of a prearranged sum, which you will pay me in cash... Yeah, yeah, $1,001. Here, come. In consideration of this payment, I agree to, uh... uh, uh well, uh, to put uh, uh, Samson to, uh, to sleep, okay? Oh, uh, I think this is just all... Oh, Rosie, will you shut up, please? Very uh, well, sir, you've got an agreement. Now, also, I, I, I want you to remove him from the premises after, uh... So doing. Uh, certainly, certainly. 
And one other thing, uh, just in case there's any question, uh, can Samson definitely be identified by his uh, markings and whatnot? Oh, indeed he can. It's on his certificate. Well, that, that's all I want to know. All right. Uh, sign right here, Mr. Oh, very well. Very well. Good. Now, uh, I'll sign. Okay, Rosie, and uh, here, you, you sign as a witness. <laughs> Look, Rosie, don't cry on the contract. You'll run the ink. Hold your head back and sign your name. Sign it. You want to get fired? Ah, that's that's the girl. All right, Mr. Hackleberry, can can I have that dollar? Oh, uh, uh, here you are, sir. Very well. The uh, uh, the animal is yours. And now as to uh, uh, putting him to sleep. Uh, I wanted to ask you about that, sir. Uh, uh, would it be all right if I walked him up into the truck first? Yeah, anything you wish. It'd be pretty hard moving him afterwards. <laughs> Well, you shut up, Rosie. Uh, go right ahead, Mr. Heichelberg. He's, uh, he's your property. Uh, come along, stop me. Oh, his name is Samson. And he's a great artist. That's enough now. Now, clam up. It's just a horse. Here we go, boy. Here we go. That's it. Up in the ramp. Into the truck. There's a good boy. That's it. Now, lie down. Lie down. I can't watch this anymore. I've never felt so terrible in my life. Yeah, Rosie, Rosie, come back here. She seems to be mighty fond of this horse. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, well, so am I, but what are you going to do when you got a crooked partner? I, well, go ahead, Mr. Hackleberry. I remember feeling good because Hackleberry told me Samson never felt a thing. He just went to sleep. And I hate to admit it because after all the trouble that nag caused me, but a few minutes later when I watched the truck drive through the studio gate, I, I could hardly see it for the tears in my eyes. By the next morning, things were really popping. Not that I cared a nickel's worth what Rodney thought of me. I'd stopped him cold. That's all that mattered. But the whole company was set up to go to work. The, the cast, the crew, everybody. There wasn't any horse they could use. We were losing money every minute, but all Rodney could talk about was Samson. All right, when this series is finished, I'm going to slay you. Like you tried to slay me last night? Homer, what did you think you were doing? I was protecting my interests. 10000 a week to a horse behind my back. It was for his old age. His and yours, you lousy crook. I was thinking of Samson. Well, there isn't any Samson now, so the money stays in the partnership where I can enjoy it. Well, if I weren't so brokenhearted, I'd kill you. Yeah? Well, we can get a new horse, see? Don't you even talk to me. And this one just runs up and down hills. He doesn't read scripts. Now go away. Come in. It's uh, Mr. Hackleberry. He'd like to see you for a minute. Oh, tell him to get lost. He's got his money. He says it's very important. Well, I'm not going to look at him. What's he come around for now, anyhow? Can I step in for a minute, sir? No. I'll only take a moment. Maybe I can be of assistance to you. Now, look, Hackleberry. I understand you're having a little trouble getting a horse to replace Samson this morning. Now he's going to sell us another one. Well, not exactly sell him, sir. If, uh... Well, if we could uh, just have a private talk for a minute. Eh? Okay, okay. Come on in. Hey, what do you got in mind? Well, sir, uh, I couldn't help wondering last night uh, why you were in such a hurry to get rid of Stopgap. Samson. Samson, yes, sir. So, uh, so on the way home, after I put him to sleep... Don't mention it. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Old Man. Come on, come on. Get to the point, will you? Well, as I say, sir, being a close viewer of television, it occurred to me that you might want to re-engage Samson's services uh, after he's woken up. After he, he's what? After he's woken up. Uh, you don't think a good, healthy horse like that's going to sleep forever, do you? Why? You, you mean he's alive? Alive and kicking. I got him out in the truck. Oh, I love you, Mr. Hackleberry. I love you. And I love you, too, Mr. O'Mara. That $10,000 a week's gonna come in mighty handy. Oh, no! What are you talking about? Why, Samson's salary. Isn't that what his contract says, $10,000? Whether he works or not? Look, Rodney, Rodney, 
fit your neck between my fingers. You first, partner. Well, now, I think $10,000's a very fair price. And being Samson's owner, I'm willing to pledge his full cooperation, just as long as he lasts. Now, that's right. That's right. Nice of you, partner. Not at all, sir. Do you want me to unload Samson out of the truck so your movie people can start to work? Well, yeah, if you're sure he's awake. Oh, yes, sir. He's wide awake. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll bet he gets it from you. This is Rod O'Connor again. We hear a great deal in this day and age about the individual. On the other side of the Iron Curtain, of course, the individual counts for nothing. If there's any ideal besides the most savage kind of dictatorship, that ideal would be the masses, the mass man, the mass mind, instead of the individual person, which is so sacred to us. But isn't it possible we could lose sight of one important factor in the equation? And that is, that though we reject the mass man idea, and rightly so, the individual isn't really the basic unit of society either. The family is. When we stop to think about it, the family is the foundation of civilization, and no civilization is going to be happier or have deeper roots or stronger ties than the families that go to make it up. But what gives the individual family its morale and unity? Well, there could be a lot of things, like the natural dispositions of the family group, that they're pleasant people and love each other and get along well with their neighbors. But we know, too, that human nature is very variable and sometimes rather weak. And sometimes sorrow or trouble comes to roost, and then we realize that we've got to have something to lean on besides our weak little finite selves. That's why family theater urges you to pray, to pray as families, but not just in time of trouble, but as a family proposition every day, and assures us that that is what will give our families their morale and unity, those strong ties and deep roots, and the happiness we all crave. The family that prays together stays together, and a nation at prayer will hold together in spite of all the storms that may threaten us. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Horse Sense, starring Jack Carson. Rod O'Connor was your host. Others in our cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Jack Crucian, and Bill Bauckham. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Cover Up, starring Marjorie Steele. Charlton Heston will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. <laughs> <laughs>